this is the point in this evening session where I would love to welcome our, our speaker and guest for this evening, Rahim Morris. So can we hear it for her right now? Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. It's so good to have you here. Um, this evening, I'd, I'd love to, to first just um, start at really the beginning and hear your journey to, to, to where you are. Mm -hmm. um, you're the managing director of Ethio Green PLC. That's correct. Just to maybe set some context, tell us what the business is, what it does, and then we'll, we'll move back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, my name is Rahel Mogas. My company is called Ethio Green Production and Industry PLC. Uh, my company currently is processing uh, Ethiopian, of course, in Jera, 100% TAFE, for both local and export market. And I'm proudly say that uh, this business started in 2008 in Washington, D.C. And then it was our company, the first one to start importing to Washington, D.C., to the North American market. And today it is a growing industry. But before I say anything, I want to say something from this gathering. Because I came in. And I, w I looked around, and as Caleb says, you know, I w I'm a member of an association. In fact, I'm a president for African Women Entrepreneur Program. You know, we support our uh, association has all sectors that is currently that you can find in Ethiopia, like the agriculture, textile, leather, uh, service, and uh, jewelry and home decor and so on. But when I came in here, I was looking for faces that I know. Honestly, I did not. And you know, I was happy, <laughs> really, I was happy. Because the reason why I say that is all I see here is an, a, something that is going to explode. Mm. And I want to ask you something before I begin anything. I think most of you are from university, students. I want to know which one of you are like in studying something related to entrepreneurship. I think only I see one hand. Two, one over there. Three over there. Oh, okay. Because, you know, the reason why I say that is sometimes you go to college or university, you study, but most of the time it is not what you studied that you will end it up. That is my story. I heard there was a group around here that related to IT. You know, from until my master's, I went to an Ivy League school, which is George Washington University. And I studied, like, you know, from, like, my, I think, associate degree I studied, it was, like, associate management, business administration. And then I got my bachelor's in information systems. And I got my master's, telecommunications and networking. And I was working for esteemed company, which was Verizon Communication. And after that, I was working, the last job before I moved back here was Department of State. I was supporting a project that was digitizing the passport. Wow. And I tell you one thing, you know, that was my career. But today I ended up in my passion. That's good. So the reason why I'm telling you now you know, now maybe you study economics, you study engineering, I see here IT, but you know, you don't know what your passion is going to lead you. And I'm sure m most of you like, you know, because I tell you for a fact, like, you know, when I was working for department, especially Department of State, and when I was, because injera for me was a passion since I was very, very young, like a child. And I, start, I tell you how I started this business was, I was in a Mexican restaurant. We were eating. Everybody was eating, but you know, my mind was focusing on the tortilla. I was looking at the tortilla, and I was like, you know, these are Mexicans. They have their own food. You go to Italian restaurant, they have their own food. You go to Indian, especially now the growing communities, the Indian community, they have their own food, whether within their community or you go to supermarket, major supermarket. And then I was like, wow, you know, we are here, but we don't have the authentic food. That is when the light bulbs get on. That is how the business started. And I remember when I do that, you know what people were telling me? Wow, from IT you go to Upsit, you know, Ethiopian, <laughs> what Upsit means. Seriously. 
you know, if I was listening to them, I would say, oh, you know what? The prestigious job is to be in IT while working for Department of State. That's prestigious. That is only for the outward. I was focusing on what I really need. And I'm really thankful for doing that. So coming back to the business, I moved back. As I told you, 2008, I started Ethio Green with a partner. We started a friend of mine. You know, we started our homework and so on. When I say homework, the passion comes. After that, we go and ask. When we ask, we go to customs. We said, can we import injera? They said, what is injera? They go to the list, they couldn't find anything. The only thing that we can tell them is, okay, it's like pancake. Today it has a code, pancake without cream or custard filling. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, what did we do? We contacted here and they told us, the only thing you can do, you cannot take out the flour, you cannot take out the grain, but the injera, yes, you can, because it is value added. And then we contacted Ethiopian Airlines, and they said, wow, congratulations, you'll be the first one to start this destination. And the business started. But there was a lot of up and down to get here. So for, for, you know, for the youth like this, what I'm telling you is business is a great thing because that is exactly the business is who you are. You know, for example, you go to company. The only thing you have to follow is what the company is telling you, not what you are projecting. But when it is your business, you are in control. But with the control comes a big responsibility. Because remember, when you are working for a company, five o'clock, you're gone. But with it, when it is your own business, you sleep with it, you wake up with it, 24 by 7, 365 days, it is every, every there is no holiday. But I tell you for a fact, it is fulfilling. That's good. That's amazing. Let's hear it. Yeah. You're in a room full of people, I think, who are passionate about injera. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you say you went into your passion, which was injera, I could hear a room overjoyed with that news. I'd love to, s to hear more about the journey from you were digitalizing passports. Mm -hmm. Like That sounds like an incredibly exciting uh, job. And then that journey from there, which would have been in the US, mm -hmm. right, to coming back and, and starting. And that was in 2008, was it? Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about that journey of getting up off the ground. Okay. okay. As I say, 2008, the business started. But 2011, I moved back to Ethiopia. When I moved back, it was also a family issue. I have to be with my mom. But I said, you know what? Let me, uh, also there is an opportunity that now, instead of being an importer, which I don't have any control, now I have full control by being an exporter. The business started. I tell you for a fact, the up and down, that is when you know that as an entrepreneur, the number one thing is people think it is money, no. The number one thing that you need is you need to have a mind set, meaning you have really, that is the only way you can overcome because, you know, everybody, you live here, you know how the situation is here. Like, you know, our economy is a, a very infant economy. Because of that, there is also very up and down. You know, I rented my space. After I rented for six months, I pay rent. There was no electricity. Yes. But I'm paying rent. After that, I have to process my license for export. Wow, you know, the documentation. You know, just think of also like, you know, my mind is coming from the States. You know, sometimes you think, oh, you know, this office has this. That's not how it works. And in fact, I say now, after seven years, there's a lot of uh, difference than when I, was, when I started in 2011. So the, mind, the mindset is really very important. And people, I remember people were asking also like, you know, calling and said, wow, it's difficult, how do you survive? The only thing I did was, that really helped me, I have to say, this is not the state, this is not America. You know, I have to say to my mind, you know, whatever happened, this is Ethiopia. 
I don't compare. When I do that, you know, it is much, much easier. But after that, as things progress, also, you know, what you think is, now I start hiring people. You know, there is nothing also like, you know, um, fulfilling. You hire someone, and you know, at the back, when you hire these people, at the back, at least they're supporting three, at least three people in their family. So you know that you're giving back. So that's, you know, that by itself, it gives you strength. And the other thing is, as an entrepreneur, you know, the number one thing, an entrepreneur, I think, not, I think, I believe, an entrepreneur mindset is, when you see a problem, that is opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if there is no problem, what are you solving? But if your business, or if whatever field you are in, if you are solving something, you are a very good business. Because that is sustainable. So that's why, like, you know, when I see a lot of problem here, that is when I say, in fact, when people ask me, I said, you know what? If you have the mindset to come back, there is a lot of opportunity. Mm. By opportunity, I mean there is a lot of problem. So if we think that way, you know, it makes, I think innovation comes through problem. You know, when you see, for example, like, you know, when it's, I, I think sometimes I wouldn't call it a curse, but sometimes it's really hurt us in Africa. You know, when you think the West, they have these four weathers, especially the snow, the heat, because of that they become innovative, you know, to survive. But for us, we have a beautiful weather, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> really, we don't have to do anything. In a way, I think that really holds us back. If there was a snow, do you think we will be like this today? So I think as an entrepreneur, the entrepreneur's mindset should be, you know how, like whenever you see a problem, think how you can solve it. So that is how I survived. Amazing. So the problem you essentially saw was the Abishar community wasn't getting enough injera, fresh injera, or so how did, how did, so to DC, we all know, is, is like the second Addis yes. Ababa, right? Yes. There is an incredible, yes. a large Ethiopian community there. Maybe you can touch on kind of the, yeah. the scale of the business. How much is it daily? Is it weekly? Is it monthly? Tell us a little bit about this business now that okay. you set up. Okay. You know, in uh, the U.S., in fact, um, you know, it has, there is injera. The injera that we been eating in the U.S. was like, you know, self-rising. Sometimes you don't know what. If there is 10 percent of if, I'll be surprised. And you know what happened? A lot of people, they assume they're eating injera. You know, there is homesickness and so on. This is a food that you like uh, growing up. So what they do, they've been eating injera. And whenever they go to doctors, they keep, like a lot of people start developing diabetic. And the first thing that like, their doctor will tell them is stop the local injera, which is made in the US. Wow. And I remember like, you know, when I went, like they give you 10, uh, pieces of injera, and then I think you get it for five or seven dollars. But the thing is, you know, it is because if it doesn't, like, if doesn't, even though it grows, most of that if it was given was for feed, especially horse feed. So there was no enough fat if. If somebody says, I bake 100% if, that cannot be, because it's not sustainable. So with this, we saw opportunity. That is when we started. And uh, if you know, just like Caleb says, uh, Washington DC is the second largest community you can find Ethiopians outside of Ethiopia. So, you know, we are in the middle of this uh, huge, it's like a mine gold. So we started import, I mean, importing. And in the beginning, I remember people don't believe until this is the sticker that says Ethiopian Alliance. Which is something I don't wanna go to because, you know, here this is, a business environment, but sometimes, you, can, you know, for us, we think, oh, you know, we got a solution. We think that everybody will, you know, take it with open arm, but sometimes it is not. You know, sometimes you see straight, but sometimes also you have to look left and right, which we haven't done. With that, you know, what happened was, uh, it becomes like a little bit politicized, 
it's unfortunately I'm a business person. Really, I'm not politician. And then there was a time that they start saying, let's boycott injera. That was a big problem. But guess what happened? Another opportunity. You know what happened this time? Our supplier from here, he said, you know what, for some time, please let's hold to it. And then I think for two weeks we stopped. Oh my God, our phone <laughs> was ringing. And we said, sorry, the stores are not taking our injera. Why don't you deliver it to us? Wow. wow. <laughs> Direct delivery, no loss, zero mm. loss. So that's why I said in every problem, really, and entrepreneurship, uh, some, you know, as an entrepreneur, what you have to do is problem should not stop you. You should see a problem. Okay, what is, what is the opportunity I have behind this problem? And believe me, you will find one. So that's what happened. Mm. So now, after, you know, after some time, of course, it resumed. And guess what? The one who was opposing and so on, today they are part of the business. Wow.